Hey yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today's video is all about increasing your hip strength and stability. So I have a ton of classes on my channel that have to do with hip mobility and increasing your flexibility and range of motion. But one thing that's also equally as important is making sure that our hips are strong and stable. So this was actually a yoga class request I got in my private Facebook group for my students here on YouTube. So a great big thank you to those of you who requested this. It's an awesome idea and I can't believe I haven't done it yet. So thank you. If you have your own requests and recommendations that you would like me to do, I would recommend that you join my private Facebook group and then you can just submit them that way and I'll try to get to it whenever I can. So we're going to need one block for today's practice. I'm also using a blanket just because I still have a bone bruise on my knee and I need to be careful, but you don't need a blanket at home, just one block. And another practice that I would recommend doing if you know that hip strength is something you personally have to work on, I highly recommend doing my Evolve Your Practice Yoga with Blocks class that I have here on YouTube, and I'll link that down below in the description box. So some of the things that we do in that class, we're also going to be doing in this one because it has to do with engaging the adductors and really mobilizing the hip in its entirety. So a great lower body flow and let's just go ahead and get started. So you need to begin lying down on your back and we are going to start directly with our block. So coming all the way down, you wanna have your feet flat on the mat and just widen your feet, let your knees fall in towards each other. Rest your hands on your belly, on your hip bones and take a few breaths to ground yourself. So check in with your hips, your lower back, the abdominals. Notice how that's feeling today. Connecting to your breath as you inhale and exhale through the nose. Maybe using your ujjayi breath with a light constriction at the back of the throat. Bring your feet back in so they are now hip width distance apart. And you can walk your feet in fairly close so that you're pretty much touching the back of your heels. This isn't possible for everyone, so if you can't touch them, don't worry about it. Just do try to keep them somewhere close by. And you're gonna grab a hold of your block and you're gonna place it in between the upper inner thighs. So having a block to squeeze and hold onto is one way that we can learn to strengthen our hips and increase the stability in our pelvis. So feel the inner thighs squeeze and hug into the block. Relax your arms by your sides and we're gonna come up into our bridge pose. So as you push down into the feet, squeeze your block and curl tailbone up inch by inch as you float the hips, the low back, and the mid back off the mat. Hug in towards the midline, draw your low belly in towards your low back, and instead of feeling like your feet are pushing out in front of you, push down into your heels and drag them back towards your shoulders. You should feel the back of the legs turn on from this and engaging the glutes even more. So the glutes, the adductors, the thighs all play a really big role in making sure that your hips stay strong. Take three more breaths here, squeeze your block even more if you can relax your shoulders. So upper body does not really need to work right now. One more full breath and very slowly release down inch by inch, roll it down until the tailbone comes back to the floor. And you can move your block, just set it off to the side. You still wanna have it somewhere close within grabbing distance. We're gonna come back into that bridge pose. So push into the heels, lift the hips off the mat and now lean your weight over onto your right leg and see if you can lift your left leg off the floor without letting your pelvis dip down. So as you inhale, push and reach into those left toes. And as you exhale, drop the hips and hover them about an inch off the floor. Four more like this. Inhale, lift up. Exhale to lower. Stay stable in your right knee. Inhale up. Exhale down. Two more. Inhale, lift. 
exhale to lower last one inhale up exhale to lower bring your left foot down switch your weight over to your left leg reach your right leg up to the sky big breath in here and exhale dip the hips four more times and exhale down inhale push into the heel and lower inhale up exhale down last one inhale lift and reach through your toes bend into your right knee bridge pose and we lower down nice and slow let's cross the right ankle over the top of your left knee taking reclined pigeon here you can reach through with your arms and pull your left knee into your belly so we won't be focusing too much on hip flexibility and mobility but i do want to open up and stretch into the glutes a little bit and it'll make our other poses a lot easier to get into Find your breath. Now release, we'll switch sides, cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee, flex that left foot, and then reach through with your arms to pull your right knee to your belly. Notice if you're leaning on one side more than the other here, keep the weight evenly distributed through both sides. Give that leg one last big squeeze before setting it down and we're gonna rock up so at this point we're gonna come into our tabletop pose I'm just gonna put the blanket here under my knees just because I am still recovering from a little bone bruise here okay so tabletop pose knees are underneath your hips palms are underneath your shoulders. So working on the IT band as well as the glutes, push the elbow straight, flatten your spine, and see if you can lift your right knee out to the side. So this is kind of like puppy on a fire hydrant. This is exactly what we're doing. As you keep that right knee up, notice if all of your weight is now in your left hand and if your left elbow is bending, push it straight. Squeeze and lift up a little higher. And then exhale, lower the knee to hover. So three more like this. Inhale up, exhale to lower. Inhale, lift, release. Last one, inhale, squeeze and lift. Exhale to release. Now re-extend that leg, lift it up. See if you can straighten your right leg, squeeze and then let your right foot come down to the floor. So my ankle, my knee, and my hip are all in one long line, and then you can come up into your gate pose. Right hand slides down your right leg, inhale, left arm rises up, and then move over into a side bend. So just lengthening out of the waist. Coming all the way back up. Let your left hand come down to the floor. Reach your right arm directly up to the sky and then squeeze into the glutes as you lift your right leg off the floor. So kind of like a modified side plank. Right arm and right leg are lifted. One big breath here. Set your right foot down, tabletop pose onto your hands and knees and we'll switch over to the other side. So realign yourself. Engage through the pelvis, so lower belly hugs in, lower back is nice and flat. Push your right elbow straight specifically, and then left leg extends out to the side with the knee bent. Find your foundation, straighten the arms, keep leaning to the left, and then exhale to lower, three more like this. Inhale up, exhale down, two more. Lift and squeeze, and lower. Last one, inhale, lift, exhale to lower. Re-lift that left leg and then straighten the left leg, squeeze, lift it up a little higher, and then set your left foot down to the mat. Foot is in line with the hip, and come on up onto your right shin and onto your right knee. Into your gate pose, let your left hand go down your left leg, right arm extends up to the sky, move it over, side bend. 
big belly breath. Coming all the way back up, let your right hand come down to the floor. Left arm reaches up to the sky and then you can lift your left leg off the ground. So this is a great move for stability in the hips and pelvis. Left foot comes down, come back to center. Into your tabletop pose, grab a hold of your block. You're gonna place it in between the upper inner thighs, just like what we did before. Keep it there, tuck your toes under, find your downward facing dog. So down dog is one of those poses where sometimes it feels like the legs are widening away from each other. So instead, can you feel them squeeze in towards the midline? And doesn't matter if your legs are straight or if you need to bend the knees here, but can you turn on through the adductors and squeeze your block a little bit more? Curling tailbone up to the sky, soften your neck. And keeping the block in its place, we're gonna walk the feet in tiny little steps to the top of the mat. So I'm gonna move my blanket out of the way. We're coming into our forward fold. Keep the block exactly where it is. So feet are about hip width distance apart. Bend your knees, drop your hips. Chair pose, Utkatasana, hands at the heart. So hugging and drawing in, feel the tailbone lengthen down, the lower belly Squeeze in and draw the shoulders down and away from your ears. Rock your weight back into your heels. Engage all the muscles in both legs. Sink down a little bit lower. And straighten the legs, mountain pose. Keep the block there. Squeeze it even tighter. Palms shine forward. Find your balance and release the block. You can just move it off to the side at the front of the mat. So we're gonna make our way into our tree pose from here. Leaning onto your right leg, you can bring your left foot somewhere the inside of that thigh or of that leg. So I'm gonna bring my left foot towards the inner groin. And I'll turn to show you what not to do in tree pose, which is the most common misalignment for many students. So normally, if you have your left foot towards the inside of that right thigh, we tend to dump all of our weight into that right leg and the right hip pops out, we let the belly out, and there's just no strength or functional alignment here. For hip strength specifically, you need to feel that right leg push against your left foot so everything is squeezing into the midline and from here you can lift up and grow a little bit taller. So I'll turn back. So find your variation of this tree pose. Left knee is squeezing open, right knee and right toes are pointing forward. Keep hugging into the midline. Notice if the pelvis is dropping on one side or the other. Try to keep it leveled and engaged. Keep your hands pressing in together. See if you can lift the hands up overhead. Just challenging our balance a little. Bring the hands back to heart center. Stay balancing on your right leg. Float your left knee out in front of you. Again, we're not hiking and tilting to one side. Staying with integrity in the pelvis. And as gently as you can, step back into a crescent lunge. So into your high lunge. And I'm a little bit too narrow here. So in your high lunge, I want you to imagine you still had a block in between your thighs that you were trying to hug into the midline. This is one of those poses where it's easy to kind of just sink into it and let gravity do the work for us, but we need to hug muscle to bone. Tilt the pelvis slightly so that you feel the tailbone is pointing down. So your pelvis is neutral. It's not really like a tuck. It's just making the pelvis neutral so that the hips are underneath the shoulders. As you inhale, reach your arms up overhead, bend into your front knee a little more, and let's tilt forward, reach your arms back, palms face down. Just strengthening the pose a little more, really working on that right hip. Again, notice if it's pushing out to the side, hug it in. Bend that right knee a little more. Inhale, bring the arms back up and let's open to warrior two. So back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat, arms open down. 
Warrior two usually feels like your feet are pushing away from each other. Because this is hip stability, try to dig the heels into the mat and imagine you're squeezing and hugging into the midline. Still sinking down and externally rotating that hip, pushing that right knee open. Keep the legs exactly as they are, reverse, left hand down, right arm up. Inhale, back to center. Let's straighten our right leg, bring the back toes in just a couple inches. Same thing here, I'm not pushing the feet away from each other, I'm squeezing them into center. Hips go back, slide your right hand down, left arm up, triangle pose. So if this was about hip flexibility and mobility, you might be tempted to bring your hand down to the mat and then the hips move back and we lose our alignment completely. So think of tucking the hips under, lengthening and pushing that left hip back and lean your chest back as you look up towards that left hand. One more big breath. Looking down to the floor, bend into your right knee, bring your palms to the ground, take your vinyasa. Inhaling to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog, whatever feels good. And we make our way back, downward facing dog. So this time we're doing downward dog without a block, but can you still imagine that it's there and still feel the upper inner thighs engage? So hugging and squeezing through the hips. Let's take a few steps to the top of the mat. Bending your knees, this time bring your big toes together to touch heels apart. Come back into your chair pose without a block again this time. So physically squeeze and hug in, engage the glutes, rock your weight back into your heels. And press to stand, Tadasana, mountain pose. Let's make our way into tree pose on the other side. So leaning onto your left leg, bring your right foot somewhere along the inside edge of that left leg. So super important here that you're externally rotating that hip and that you're not letting all of your weight dump into that left hip. So we're not sagging, we're trying to keep both hip bones pretty much at the same height. And the great thing about pushing your left thigh in towards the sole of your right foot is that it's also gonna make it a lot easier for you to balance. So every time I do a class and I turn from facing uh, the mat to facing the camera, I always get a bunch of comments from people saying, how are you able to keep your balance while you do that? It's easy because I'm just squeezing my legs together and it helps so much. So hip flexibility is great, but hip strength is really where it's at. Reach the arms up, keep your hands together. Try to draw the rib cage down and in. Hands come back to the front of the heart. Lift and float that right knee directly out in front of you. And as if you're on opposite train tracks, you're gonna step that right foot all the way back for your crescent lunge. So feet are about hip width distance apart or so and I need to bend my back knee just to make sure the pelvis stays aligned directly underneath the shoulders. Notice if the knees are widening, hug in. Strengthen through the hips. Inhale, arms reach up overhead. Exhale, tilt forward, reach your palms back and facing down. Because you're looking down, take a peek at your left knee. Notice what it's doing. Is it wobbling side to side? Can you keep it directly over your ankle? Inhale, come all the way back up. Exhale to warrior two. So squeezing in as if you're trying to bunch up your mat at the center instead of ripping it apart. So just a different action. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily wrong to go with the action of moving out, but for the sake of hip stability and strength, we wanna gather in. Let's reverse, right hand down, left arm up. Back to your warrior two. 
straighten that left leg, narrow your stance. We're getting ready for triangle pose. Same thing, hips go back, gather the energy in. Don't worry about how low you're going in the pose. Just try to draw that right hip bone back so you're stacking the pelvis and engaging through the legs. Looking down to the floor, bend into that left knee until the palms can come down. Take your vinyasa, or you're welcome to skip it and just go to down dog if you prefer. Hug in through the midline. Okay, from this down dog, reach your right leg up to the sky. Keep it straight and squared. Again, notice what that right leg is doing. Squeeze it in. Let's step the right foot forward in between the palms to the top of the mat. Come back up into your high lunge. Circle the arms nice and wide. Strong foundation in this lunge. You're gonna bend your elbows at a 90 degree angle and you're gonna wrap your left arm under the right, binding once or binding twice for your eagle arms. If none of those work today, just hold on to the shoulders or the shoulder blades. Try to look through your forms to something that is not moving. We're gonna step up to eagle pose. Another fantastic pose for hip stability. So left leg crosses over the right and can loop once or twice. This is not a passive pose. Engage the inner thighs, engage the legs, bend both knees and sink down. Stay with your eagle legs. Just release your hands to your heart. Chair pose, uncross, big toes together, heels apart. And we'll take a prayer twist, left elbow over the top of your right knee. Take a peek down at your knees. Usually the left one moves forward and we lose stability in our hips. Shift that left knee back, keep your pelvis in line. Opening through the heart. And looking down, just to help you with balance, you can rock your weight onto your right foot, maybe hover the left foot off the mat, and step it back with control into that high lunge with a prayer twist. Into your vinyasa, hands down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Upward dog. Downward dog. Lengthen out, push into your heels, squeeze in. Switching sides, left leg rises. Keep it into the midline, pelvis is leveled. Even for me, this is probably one of the things I find the hardest in yoga is to keep the pelvis leveled whenever I lift one leg up. Step it forward for your high lunge. So feet about hip width distance apart, give yourself some room. So I don't know if you noticed, but I just corrected myself. One thing that happens for a lot of people in high lunge is that back leg pulls your hip back and then we lose integrity in our pelvis. So can you feel that left hip squeeze back, right hip move forward? And let's bend the elbows at a 90 degree angle. You're gonna wrap your right arm under your left once or twice for your eagle arms. And we're gonna step up to our eagle pose. Right leg crosses over the left. Maybe the toes loop back. This is not necessary. Try to keep both knees facing forward. Sink down low, hug into the midline. Squeeze yourself. Like you're trying to wring out a dish towel. Stay with your eagle legs. Just bring your hands to your heart. Chair pose, big toes together, stay low. And we twist over to the left, right elbow over your left knee. Look down at your knees, shift your right knee back, keep your pelvis stacked. Twist from here. And looking down to help with balance, you can move over to your left foot, 
pick up the right foot off the mat and step it back for your high lunge with a prayer twist. Strong legs, you got this. Looking to the floor, take your vinyasa. We meet in downward facing dog. So from down dog, we're gonna make our way into locust pose. Please grab a hold of your block and place it in between the upper inner thighs before lowering down to the floor. So locust is another great one for hip stability and strength. Point your toes back, reach your arms back, squeeze your block as much as you possibly can, and then pick everything up off the floor. Hugging into the midline, back of the neck is long, no need to look up too high. Try to pick the shoulders up away from the floor and squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. One more full deep breath. And exhale to release. Move your block off to the side and just roll over onto your back. Just move my props here. Okay, pull your knees into your belly. Give it a big squeeze. So we'll take an IT band stretch since we did work this quite a bit today. Feet flat to the mat. You can just move your hips a little bit over towards the right. You're gonna straighten your left leg, bring your right knee into your chest, and then cross that knee over to the left. So this is like a laying spinal twist. Right arm reaches out to the side. This might be enough for you if you'd like to go deeper into the IT band and hamstrings, just straighten your right leg and you can slide that left hand down towards the shin and the ankle. A good five to 10 breaths here. You had your right leg straight, bend that knee, roll onto your back and we'll switch sides. So your hips might have to go a little bit more to the left. Right leg straightens out, pull your left knee in, cross it over to the right side of your mat. Reach your left arm nice and long and you can stay here or if you did it on the first side, also straighten that left leg and slide your right hand further down towards the calf. So this is a great way to release the low back, to stack the pelvis, and to get a nice, good, nice big stretch into the legs. Bend the left knee, roll onto your back. Just one last little pose here before we come into Shavasana. We can take a little happy baby stretch. So widening the knees towards the shoulders and armpits. You can either hold here if this is enough, or you can reach for your big toes or the soles of your feet as you stack your ankles over your knees. Soles of the feet facing up to the sky. And I like to rock a little bit side to side, just massaging the low back. Try to keep your tailbone pushing into the floor so you're not lifting your hips off the ground here. Oh, 
whenever you're ready, we make our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose. Take up space with the arms and the legs. And really give yourself a few minutes to enjoy the Shavasana. This is your body's opportunity to integrate all of the work you've done. Similar to digesting after a big meal. Feel the effects of your practice. You might be able to feel quite a bit of sensation in the pelvis and in the hips. I know I definitely do. So we want to practice relaxing our hips now after all of that tension, contraction, and engagement. Just let it go. Waking back up from Shavasana. Breathe even deeper. Make any little movements that help re-energize your body. Rolling the ankles and the wrists. Extend your arms up overhead. Take a really great big stretch. And we'll roll to one side. Use your arms to help yourself come up. Take a seat. Sit up nice and tall and close your eyes. And notice how the pelvis and the hips feel now, as opposed to when you first began this practice. Bring your hands together at the front of the heart. We close with a chant of Om one time, inhaling to chant. Big breath. Ooh. Namaste. 
Thank you so much Yogi is for doing this hip strengthening yoga practice with me. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe. It's totally free. You just have to click on that little red subscribe button and it's a wonderful way to support free yoga on the internet. If you would like to be part of the next discussion where I ask you guys what video um, video and yoga classes you want to see on my channel, please do join my Facebook group for students of this Yoga with Cassandra channel. Again, it's also free, it's a lot of fun, and it's a wonderful community to be a part of. Thank you all so very much. Have a good day, and I'll practice again with you soon.